Now, one time, how did you all get started? Well, that's the same question I ask everybody, but I don't mean how you got started on YouTube. That's easy enough. I always want to know, and I've asked this question so many times, the buck that bit you. I mean, what was it that made you crazy? What movie was it? I'll go first, yeah. Slashing ass, let me go first. Okay. Um, well, what movie made me go crazy? Um, I was wearing a zombie shirt earlier. I love that movie, Zombie 1979. It's a banger. Um, I showed my uh, father showed me that way too young. Uh, it scared the hell out of me. I thought zombies were gonna rip me to pieces when I was just a little kid. And I've been in love with horror ever since. So it's not really. That is a kind of a harsh one to start with. There's like boobs. I mean, it's bad. I, there's boobs in it, but at least it's not cannibal holocaust. Oh, we said boobs and everybody's sleeping. No, we're sorry. Oh, no, no, don't no, leave us. Oh, oh, well, fine. Put up the phone and pretend you're talking to somebody. <laughs> she was literally pretending to talk to somebody. You watch that? That was good. Oh my god. I never get to do this. All right, keep, keep going. Uh, just, honestly, I don't know. I truly don't remember what that movie was that, that started for me, because I was like two. Uh, my, my mom was a big fan of slasher films. She's not anymore. I don't know what, why. That, that's something we could bond over, but she doesn't watch it all anymore. But Your mom still talks to you? Yeah. What's that like? Just <laughs> joking, dude. <laughs> uh, Man, I didn't mean to bring it down. I thought it was funny in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, my early, I'll say my earliest memory of watching a horror film is like seeing the DVD menu to Friday the 13th Part 7. So old. So seeing that DVD menu when I was like, yeah, two or three, uh, I had like a really strong memory of that. But in terms of like the most influential with me, Spring and Halloween, even to this day, like still two and three. Cool. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would watch horror movies here and there growing up. But it wasn't until about. Uh, and to high school, where I started watching more. Uh, I think Scream's the one that really reeled me in. Um, but yeah, slashers, love them. 90 slashers. That's that's my win. I just realized you're missing something. What am I missing? Facial hair. <laughs> I no hair, man. I, I'm really lagging. Oh, there's <laughs> some up there. <laughs> <laughs> there has got some up there, right? Beach fuzz? <laughs> yeah, no, but you, you need a beard. And it's got a beard. <laughs> You, you need a Merkin. <laughs> that joke was for seven people out there that know what a Merkin is. Google it later. That's okay. I got, I got nothing. That's okay. Yeah. Trust me, you don't need one. <laughs> oh, oh, He's seen. There you go. I think you know what it is. I think that's the best. Hey, what's up? She brought us alcohol. <laughs> I wish to. All right. Now that we've said all of that, so how did you get into what you're doing right now? Do you want to start down here and we'll move our way down? Uh, yeah, so basically a group of uh, friends, us included, uh, we're doing a, a podcast. It wasn't really horror related, but uh, we uh, found out that it kind of became more horror topics. Um, and then we decided to rebrand and start just a horror show. And that's evolved into gaming and live streaming and independent filmmaking. And you were on so. Yeah, I always wanted to be a, a director growing up, uh, so it, it was horror films especially that got me into that. But uh, it wasn't even my idea to start a podcast, it was actually, it wasn't either of our ideas, it was our buddy's idea, and pretty quickly it just became me and him talking about horror movies for an hour, and then it was like sports for five minutes, and then it was back to horror movies. So when we, we launched an interview with Harrison Smith, like director of Death House, and that morning, Going into the interview, we were like, okay, let's just make a horror podcast and lock into this thing. So that's what we did. And then with Friday the 13th, the game, that came out. Uh, we started going into more gaming and live streaming and things like that. And that is where the channel still sits today. It's that type of content. It's cool. I just like, well, I just wanted to talk about horror movies on the internet, find more uh, wonderful weirdos like all of you. Uh, and I, I have. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun just talking about horror and stuff. I just kind of did, like, updates for upcoming movies. Too. Yeah. Like, I was talking about that. I was doing, like, big video essays for, uh, like, other just movies that I really appreciate. And it's been just a lot of fun to do that for five years now. So That's awesome. I, and my bonehead's not specifically horror, so I always find it fascinating when you guys just do horror because I always think, I don't know that I can, because we're, like, three... 40, 350, I think 340 something. Yeah. And I don't know that I can do it for 300, 40 years because I love movies so much. I love cinema, I love film. So I'm just curious, who are some of your favorite or maybe your big guests that you've got? 
Um, I had Doug Bradley on the page last year. Yeah, you did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was so nervous. Like, there, I've done a bunch of interviews, but that was the one that I think uh, made me shaky the most. Love old Doug. He's great. Uh, and he was so intimidating. If you think he's intimidating on screen as uh, Pinhead, oh my god, try talking to him for an hour. But he's great. He's, so, he's such a lovable little teddy bear, too, at the end of the day. So, uh, such an awesome interview. So much fun. But the good thing about Doug is he's tall. He is. No, he absolutely he is. is. I didn't have to do no, no. <laughs> If anybody was for his, the panel here last year, I actually got criticism online for letting Doug Bradley talk too much. Think about that. That's the reason why you should not read the shit on the internet. Just avoid it. <laughs> they will blow you up, and that's not true either, and they will tell you how awful you are, which is also not true. Do you all agree with that? One. Yeah, yeah, basically. What about you, Walt? I, you know, we don't do a lot of interview content anymore, but we used to, we didn't do it this year, we were so busy, but we had like this Halloween virtual convention day, and we started COVID, you know, it's just kind of just kind of something to do that year. Uh, and I think, man, whether it's Spencer from Einstein Kills, he was a ton of fun to talk to. Uh, James Rewarding, we've been interviewed several times. He's always a lot of fun. Chris Duran? Chris, I, man, I love Chris Duran so much. Uh, he has, he's one of the best storytellers ever. Uh, mm -hmm. Love to argue with him, so that's probably some of the spotlight there. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Is I, there anybody I, you want to ask? I that? definitely agree. I think we have an opportunity for a little uh, documentary about Steve Nash. Yeah. And get those <laughs> personal kind of interviews, but mostly talk about Steve Nash with uh, CJ Ray and Kate. Yeah, that was, that was a pilot too. That's cool. So I probably should turn it over to let some of you all ask some really good questions. Who has some questions up here? Yeah, please, sir. What were some of the earlier um, obstacles that you had to deal with in regards to establishing um, yourself and what I That's a great question, man. Um, biggest thing with horror and YouTube, they don't mix all the time. You know, uh, a lot, <laughs> YouTube will, will shut down a lot of videos, a lot of live streams. Um, I get away with swearing all the time, which is a big thing. I don't understand how it happens. A lot of other YouTubers will tell me they're like, I don't know how, how you get away with that. Biggest thing, I mean, I, I really think at first, like when you when you got to monetize the channel and stuff, I'm getting real deeply analytical here. Sorry, guys. Um, but just like, I mean, you got to you got to censor the gore and stuff. There's the horror fans don't want to hear that. That sucks, right? But I think at a certain point, YouTube, you post enough videos, YouTube gains that trust with you, and then you can kind of just be a little more easy with it for sure. I mean, I guess yeah, I'm sure some of you guys know Dead Meat. Come on. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, thank you. They're the, they're the best. We love them. Uh, they're sitting right next to me. Uh, I, <laughs> I think what's, what's great about them is like a lot of their content isn't as censored these days, which is nice. And again, I think that's because they've uh, established that trust. They posted enough videos on YouTube that they get uh, uh, demonetized as, as much. So I, again, it's it's building that trust. It's making enough videos to where not only are you monetized, but can like YouTube be like, okay, you know, you're, you're, the checks are cool. I think your first like ten videos you post when you're monetized, that that checks. It takes a little longer. That's my crazy conspiracy theory. They're 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 really looking at it, and at a certain point, they're just kind of like, okay, whatever. So. Yeah, the, the check system is uh, it's just kind of nonsense for word graders. Honestly, uh, now we're at, we're at the point now where it doesn't even like it's automatic. It's automatically green. It never does thing. So yeah, there is this weird like creating trust thing. I will say my cheat code that is I always put light profanity. Ooh. Yeah, you know, with black, that way it's, I'm kind of snitching on myself. But at the same time, it's, it, they still monetize you, so you just kind of instantly bypass checks that way. I, I, what I was saying for like any video creation, one, it's a lot of it is so much of it's about luck. Like, there's no formula that's, hey, if you do this this way, you're going to make it. It's not that. I, I think if you're going to get into content creation, what it should always be is because you just want it to win. You want to talk about for us there's horror movies and horror video games and it's fun doing that and once an audience is created and maybe you make money doing it that's just icing on the cake you, know, you can't go into it wanting to do that because otherwise it'll get burned out almost immediately you're kind of sitting down on yourself and not getting the views you want so that's just like a really bad head space to be in uh but i want the i think the biggest thing for keeping an audience and keep growing consistently and like the algorithm push you is consistency that's what YouTube wants, especially YouTube, but yeah, it's just keep getting content out. It doesn't matter. You don't have to always try to one up the last video. You know, you just keep getting content out, keep doing your best, keep being yourself, and that will help get you a push. But at the end of the day, a lot of it's luck. Yeah. Yeah, that with the, you know, Mr. Beast formula, all the videos are starting to look the same. 
Um, but you know, being yourself is, is really key. And making the content that you want to make, not making it for people to watch. Yes, sir. Uh, so, Phil Joy, Thank um, you. You're always being reiterating. And one of the ways you do that is with your in the film discussion right over the years. One of my favorites is the Red Light Hand Care that you did with Hollywood uh, yeah. Spring Break. Uh, it's great. So, can you kind of talk about what it's like reinventing yourself and making an independent work like that? You did an amazing work. Oh, thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm glad someone saw it. Uh, that <laughs> the whole world saw it. Stop playing. <laughs> um, dude, it, it, that's a great question because I, I think it, um, it it takes a lot of courage. You know, I think you can fall into the like just the, like a circle of doing the same thing over and over again, and you're like, okay, you know, like this this can work. You know what I mean? I like doing this. I, I I'm comfortable here in this little space, just doing the same thing over and over again. But the algorithm is not cool with that. You know what I mean? Like you got to keep. Yeah, you can't you can't just chase trends though because what they're they're saying I absolutely love is you have to want to do it. If there's a if there's something trending right now and it's just not your thing, um, I get a lot of people who tell me they're like Jake, love the page, but I'm just not crazy about Terrifier, for instance. That's been my obsession for the last like nine months, and I respect it. I'm like I'm like you know what man, that's that's all good. I'm, I'm thankful that you're still here commenting on the page. But if you're if you're someone who's like that's just not my thing, even though it is the biggest thing in the space, don't talk about it. Talk about something else, and you'll get views. You will. Uh, if you put hard work into it and you really love what you're doing, you're talking about something that you, you really are passionate about, talk about it. Talk about Phantasm. Talk about Halloween 3 or, or whatever the hell you want to get into, man. But uh, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. There's trends and then there's also just, can you put a lot of dedication and hard work into something? People will respond to that. All right, in the back, no, come around, what do you, yeah. This is one more from the Slash and Cast Boys. Uh, you guys did the Fall Camp Blood Friday the 13th fan film. What? I guess, like, what decisions went into the plot, the placing of the film for the series? Like, what made you guys think, like, oh, what did we this take up after part four? I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, there, there's a really long answer to that. I'll try to go through it. Quickly, but I mean, originally, what the fall and blood was was a direct sequel to part six, and we did a nine day shooting block, and it went horribly wrong, got rained out multiple days, and uh, when we had to come back and basically do it again, so like, why well, I, I have another idea that I think might be better, and what that was, just picking up the part four and having essentially kind of what Halloween four is with. Michael, you know, bringing out of the ambulance and, and you know, killing paramedics. Like when we did that with Jason and pick up after the final chapter. Uh, and, and with that, that was just like, I, this is my favorite one of the franchise. I'm going to continue it. And with that, came a risk because we wanted to pick up that Nick. I most loved him as a scene. We wanted it to be like clear cut and not making a sequel. Like, this is it. And we also had to make a choice to eliminate five and on. And fan film or not, people are going to be by that and people were uh, but that's what fan clubs are good for is, is taking that risk and doing something that Hollywood uh, won't want to do or can't do and that's pretty much what all the other team fan films are right now is it, I mean it's been 15 years it's been 15 years and I keep still a mess so at the end of the day it's not more than a passion project I have nothing to add that was a good question now no yeah absolutely <laughs> I'm, I'm always my worst critic. Uh, I'm, I always just hate what I what I put out, no matter what. I think that's what's what was tough about it, man. Um, the 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 best thing you can do is you can look at what you made, and instead of just saying this sucks, this is bad, you know, um, I think the better thing to look at it as, what can I improve, you know, be constructive with yourself. Um, they say that constructive criticism is good to give on movies, you know what I mean? Like if you just say, this sucks, that doesn't, that adds nothing, but <laughs> that does not help the director at all. Um, but if you can, if you can say something like, well, what if you did this better? You know what I mean? What if you did this? I don't take offense to that. That to me is like the most valuable knowledge possible. Um, so if I, if I can look at something I've made or someone else can and be like, what if you just, you know, just did that a little differently, you know what I mean? It took a little more time in this area or something. That to me is, is the best. You got to be able to do that with yourself, uh, not only with the movies you criticize, I think. Yeah. 
I mean, you definitely got to look at different perspectives as well. Yeah, especially early on, uh, you're going to sit there at every video you want it to do really well, and you want everyone to agree with you, and everyone to have a good time in the comments, but people have different perspectives, and it's, it's always a good idea to try your best to, uh, to look at those different perspectives. Opinions can come from everyone. Yeah, the, uh, the stuck-up answer is have something to vent to. Uh, is what I would say, and that's where it's really nice uh, having someone to work with, is that there's always people in the comments that are going to be around about something or disagree with you, and, and, you know, like Jake said, it's not usually constructive. It's usually pretty, it's pretty mean. So, yeah, it's having someone to vent to and get over with internally. That way, it's you don't take it on that person. I, I said the, the one thing that's always stuck with me with creating things and kind of like, getting over it might not be the best video, but you just got to get it out there. Uh, in college, I was asked, you know, where do you want to be in 10 years? And there was a time that I would have said, I want to be directing films in Hollywood, we're doing this and that. Uh, now, the, the answer is simple. I just want to be creating things. And, and if in 10 years from now, I'm still creating things, that means I didn't give up on what that dream was. And that mentality, like, really gets me through. It's like, just post the video. It's okay. Like, if it's bad, that's fine, because you can make one, another one tomorrow. I'm cheering. Yeah, you are. What is the one video that we can be satisfied being able to do? What's the one video you all can do? That was the dancing video. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I'm trying to think. Going back. I, see, I, I have made, uh, I, I just clocked in at 1,600 videos in five years, which is um, I, going back to that whole thing, though, I used to, ah, oh, man, I've done some fun reviews. I, honestly, my Terrifier 3 review that I just put out, I'm really proud of that. I, I saw the movie twice before I reviewed it and stuff, and I'm like, I'm taking notes, like, on my phone in the theater. Uh, I, it was, uh, it, it was chaotic, but it's, um, I think, like, just, again, I, I think I'm proud of it because it's five years of work. It's five years of trying to figure out how to do a review. Um, and it make that something entertaining for people, not just being like, here's my opinion and why I think this movie is this way. You gotta make it entertaining, you gotta layer it with details, uh, things you caught in the movie, you know, that makes your review worthy of being, of watching, you know? Uh, and I feel like I'm, now, five years later, I, I have made a little bit of progress, you know, maybe like that, that much, but I'm, I'm somewhere with it. Uh, and and that, that one from like just like two weeks ago now, I'm really proud of, so check it out if you want. <laughs> it, it is really good. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. That you, do you have a chartistic fan? I, I have two, and I think you'll agree with both of them. Because right? there's two videos that just did not get views. So it, analytically, there's a couple things that have blown up and got millions of views. I'm like, why? Why does that happen? Uh, like the store gameplay clips, things like that. And the two that just did not get views that I think are really good videos, we did a parody for Friday and Forget the Game. That was the Pokemon theme song, and it had a whole bunch of Easter eggs and funny memes from the game. Yeah, like 2,000 views. Okay, all right, that's fine. And then we did the, the Steve Dash documentary that you already mentioned that we did with the, the Dash with family, with, with Steve's family. That a ton of work went into that. And it, I, it's not that numbers are numbers. I just think I want more people to see it and see who Steve was truly as a person and how much his family cared for him and how his his friends in the industry, his feature CJ Graham and Kay Hodder and, and uh, just how much they cared about him. And I just wish more people saw that too. Yeah, Steve Dash died. Yeah. Now it's saying that's that's definitely the one. I think that yeah, you just want people to see the content, not just because we made it, yeah. because we we're proud of what we made. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Next question. Yeah, I saw you first, and then you. I right. said, so like, yes, ma'am. Um, how does kind of the the genre and the comments that you interact with? How does that change? Um, that's very deep and existential, man. <laughs> I think, so like, like I said earlier, I think there is like the gamification of YouTube where you got it, got it quick, you got to catch people's attention for eight seconds. No one's going to watch, especially in shorts and TikTok. The attention span has just gone down, so you got to get the information out there. Get it entertaining matter and you got to get that one out of ten it can't be ten out of ten can't be your worst before you get so i think you know, the gamification has definitely changed dramatically in the falls ten years yeah, you're constantly trying to learn what the algorithm wants you to do and, and there's so many weird things you never even think about that make a difference like 
the file name that you save your video as is taken into account with the algorithm. So if you're like, you know, you go to render a video and you just put like, you know, uh, movie review one, two, three, you know, and just like the date, that could actually affect your overall views. And so those it's little things like that, it's like con constantly learning like how to have thumbnail engagement and that yeah, YouTube shapes a lot more than John has. I, I will say independent horror, especially with that the horror genre, seeing things like Terror Fire blow up, that's opened the door big time for creators to talk about things that the general public is just now starting to get used to, I guess. So I have terrible old man hearing. Can you say the question one more time? I'm so sorry. It's okay, stand up. <laughs> oh, she's an intern. Uh, I was just asking how much content they could engage with a topic genre and some don't change to any part of it. I didn't really do anything. Oh, like, okay, so like, so like, uh, just like on YouTube, how we're out changing, like making my content, like based on like the horror genre, is that kind of what you're, what you're asking here? Yeah. I'm so sorry I'm making you talk so much. I, I feel so bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, um, that, that's a great question because there's been a lot, like I, I kind of started getting going around like 2020, like right during the pandemic. That's kind of right when I started really focusing on, on things. Um, and I feel like we kind of came out of this era where like, a24 horror was like really popular. That was like kind of like, like a bigger thing in the indie underground scene. Now it's like slashers again. You know, slashers are totally making a comeback, which is so exciting. Um, and again, I think like the going back to that argument earlier about like what's trending versus what you want to talk about. Um, I, I there, there are some things like right going on in the space right now that I just you know just might not be my cup of tea. Uh, but but again, like I think if you just put effort into like you're just like I like I really like this thing. It might not be the most popular right now, but if you like go hard and you make like a really good video that is like this deserves attention right now in in this space, uh, then then people will will pay attention for sure. But I, I think like yeah, it, it, like you guys were talking about the gamification of YouTube. You know, like you want to you want to hop on those trends sometimes uh, because it's like well you know you can post like something about this and that and then you can get you can get some views but is that as satisfying is, is that as fulfilling you know is it like posting about things you really care about i think that's the question that you really got to ask yourself at the end of the day you know all right who hit my next question okay in the back i'm just curious on the behind the scenes what are the rules and the tricks for showing Clips of what you're talking about without dealing with copyright. Without dealing with what? I didn't hear copyright. Copyright. Uh, for the different clips you're showing, like some people seem to show almost an entire movie, some people show like five seconds. And it, is there a line there? I do the five second thing. I don't know about you guys. That seems to be an unwritten rule. Based on the U.S. jurisdiction, one seventy. That's actually true. That's real. You technically get fifteen seconds. Like that's oh. where that's where they can kind of lay off of you. It's fifteen seconds. Now, lately, especially for for some reason, a lot of uh, distribution companies will manually go out of their way to grab reviews and claim five second clips that shouldn't be claimed, and that you got to dispute and all that. The rule, especially out of the visuals, is usually 15 seconds. But it's honestly, it's a guessing game at the time because that system that YouTube has is so wonky. You can kind of abuse it. Yeah, the most popular movies and the most niche movies are the ones that are the harshest. Those three use three seconds, and you you might get covered. Um, and some don't even really care, and they'll let you go until full 15 or even even longer. Just depends, really. Good question. I think I had a question. Yes, ma'am. So you guys talked about you were bigger than we were already now. What did your love be talking about? Who was in the world? Just live or dead? Live or dead makes it more interesting. Yeah, I actually have an answer for that. I, I think if there's anyone that, like, most influential person that I can imagine in the genre, it would be Wes Craven. Uh, so that the opportunity with him would be amazing. Even just, just to meet him, uh, it, it's a shame um, he passed so soon. But yeah, that would be that would be amazing. I, I wanted to have a conversation with Richard Booker, so I think I think that's that would have been my top. I have a little more of a personal answer. I think <laughs> Lucio Fulci, who directed Zombie, like I would do anything to interview. Uh, that that guy, I love his movies so much. He's he's all about shock value, you know. And, and just to have them on like YouTube, like it would just be crazy. I don't know. I'd, I'd be so into that. Do you mind if I answer it? Uh, my mind would be Vincent Price for horror, and I know that's a little bit more on the nose. And because I'm a cinephile, though, uh, Orson Welles. I have an obsession with Orson Welles. 
Does anybody know who Orson Welles is? Yeah. I'm glad. Good. What would you say? <laughs> hey, we all right. Yeah, he did balloon up. Okay. All right. Time for just a couple more questions. What do we got? Uh, Barbara, and then in the back. Yes. I have a question for you guys. Can you remember? If Barbara's an old friend, if you saw me flip her off, I know. <laughs> Old, old friend. It's literally the time box. They're lying with your Here's the thing about that. I have been talking about so many different slasher franchises for such a long time, and I love them. I love them all. But I would totally do something weird. Like, I would do something just like, like, give me Ghoulies or something, you know? Like, I'm no, Ghoulies too. Ghoulies too. Ghoulies too. It's it's far superior. It's got Royal Dano in it. Got Ghoulies 3, dude. Ghoulies 3. I don't go to college probably one. Ghoulies too. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the mother from the rest of the literature. Yeah. 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 Oh, you want a, a real answer, is what they do. <laughs> that's that's the real answer. I think the Ghoulies one is a real answer. I don't, I don't. There's four of those movies, right? Yeah, There's, <laughs> yeah I think you could. Um, you, you can delve into that, dude. You could talk about all the 80s ripoffs of Gripplins, was what you could do. No, would you give that lady what she wants? I, I got you, I got you. I, so, if there's any franchise I feel like I could just talk about forever, it really is Scream, which might be... Let's go! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew that would make people happy. Uh, Fan yeah. service! A little bit, a little bit. Caught me red-handed. No, I, but really... Uh, uh, <laughs> I lost my... <laughs> I think the thing about Scream, though, to me, is that you can keep doing the same concept over and over and over again and again, again for so many different movies, and you can still make it fresh. I don't know if the movies themselves have made it fresh every single time, but you, you could theoretically in talking about it. See, uh, hmm. I agree with this man. I'm a bougie here. bastard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the only life in birth one. She's right. <laughs> You yeah. too, and then I'll answer. Yeah, I would have, I would have said Scream as well. Now I don't want to you know, all that. Uh, that is like a PI game that you could just, even just like playing games, you could like podcasts on it, the amount of like wolf games you can play and trivia. It's just, I honestly, I would have argued it's the best one franchise of all time. I don't think it's a really good really Let's go. Uh, but I, if I throw a curveball, let's just like, say Scooby Doo instead because uh, oh, well, the options are endless. Uh, there are instances. Yeah. Yeah. They are in That's okay. That's yeah. That for years. Oh my God! In all iterations and all the versions. Yes. I'd like to still make a channel now. I think you should. <laughs> there is a gold mine sitting there. <laughs> yeah. First ones that came to mind was Scream and then Friday the 13th. Uh, and then with this that going again, oh, there it's more to talk about. And you should have never heard of Do you want to answer? Yeah. John Carpenter's the thing. Right. I'm a bougie bastard. <laughs> and that's a damn good movie. I am bougie. No, that shit's hard to top. You get the last question in the back. Oh, and nice. They are here all weekend, so if you don't get your question answered, come see them. My question is, what uh, what YouTubers do you guys watch, and like, which ones inspire you? These guys! That's my answer. <laughs> I'm touched. Um, no, uh, what, what's my favorite YouTuber? I mean, like, you know, we all watch the big guys. You know, we all watch your Dead Meets, your CZ, CZ's World. Uh, I'm totally missing some, because those are the only two I can think of off the top of my head. I watch Slash and Cast all the time, guys. Yeah, I watch Jake all the time, too. I love you guys so much. Yeah. So much more. I was, I met, like, we met for the first time today, uh, and he, like, when he walked into my table, I had his video on, on my laptop. Uh, yeah, I, I think now, I try, I try not to watch a lot of YouTube, and you just, that's when you start getting yourself hurt out a little bit. Uh, but now it's, it's guys that I've, I've become friends with. We watch the movie, it's a huge one. I watch, we watch the movie all the time. Uh, I follow Jimmy's name on Jimmy Champagne. I yeah. follow, and follow him over to his gaming channels even, so I still watch like PS Ready and Deck Ready and things like that. Um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of the game creators too that are covering like TCM right now. I think that. Yeah, you know, like that. IFDD. IFDD, the absolute best. I wish you here. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to watch less YouTube. Uh, <laughs> uh, from everything from comedy to horror. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, Debbie. We watch movie Jimmy Chandler. Uh, James. <laughs> Do you want to watch me? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I've spoken. You go to Halloween creators, then you got a whole list. Oh, yeah. All right. Dave McRae. Drunk Dumbs. Sir Wolfula. Drunk Dumbs. Yeah. 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 But who do they really need to watch and subscribe to? Slashing <laughs> All right, I said I wasn't going to have any more questions, but I've got a gentleman in the back with his hand on He's not you, dude. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Little dude in the back. Jason, what's your question? Paranormal stuff like what? Sam and Colby, do you? I actually just watched, they went to the Conjuring House, and I did watch that an entire series that they did. Uh, I, I think a lot of the paranormal creators are kind of just you know, messing with us a little bit. I feel like they're kind of just making stuff up, but there are, there are some really good ones out there. I have opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody at this convention wants to hear my opinion. <laughs> My, my girlfriend watches Sam and Colby more than my channel, so uh, <laughs> do, do I watch them? I, vicariously through her, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for the question. Now, they're going to be here all weekend. Stop by, see them, subscribe, give them love. They are trying to use the passion, make a living at it, and give them all the flowers and all the applause for that. Thank you all so much, gentlemen. I appreciate it.